Hello everyone and welcome to the Alina Edit, your go-to guide to elevating every aspect of your life, beauty, wellness, productivity, and relationships. I'm your host, Alina, and together we will curate the best version of you. And today I have a guest on, model and artist Drea Wadsworth, to talk about what are the steps to starting your modeling career in 2024 if that is what you want to do. So the goal is we're going to talk about the various requirements that are needed in today's modeling world and you'd be surprised there's really like not that many requirements, no. right? We're also going to talk about the realities of modeling and how to stay safe, how to avoid burnout, and also give you guys kind of a step-by-step -step plan to get started and also just address any potential challenges that you might run into if this is something that you want to pursue doing. So again, I'll just like to introduce my guest. This is my friend, model, creator, artist, and owner of her own personal jewelry brand now, which is really, really cool. This is Drea Wadsworth. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm really excited to be on the podcast. We have so many valuable things to share. And yeah, I've just had so many people reach out to me and ask me about this, to about this topic. And I'm just really excited to share everything. Awesome. Yeah, so I mean, the reason we even came up with this, with this episode idea is because I randomly got a modeling job that I, I have no idea how I got it, but I essentially was asked to model for a jewelry brand, Sarah O Jewelry, and I had so much fun with it. And full transparency made the most for any job that I've ever made in that one shoot. So I was like, how can I do more of this? So I reached out to you and you were like, actually, this is a really good time for me to implement this kind of consultation thing I've been wanting to do because a lot of other people have been reaching out to you and when I tell you guys Drea like she just went above and beyond in this little presentation that she made for me that answered so many more of the questions than I ever thought I'd have so this episode is kind of going to be a breakdown of that kind of service that she provides and just everything that we need to know if you want to get into modeling so do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and your modeling story yeah, so modeling for me actually kind of happened on accident. I was just posting selfies and then one day I set up my phone and was on self timer and took a bunch of photos and photographers started noticing and reaching out to me and then I just did a lot of shoots and it was mm -hmm. very part time for me in college because I was so busy. Mm -hmm. But it was always kind of alive. It was always kind of there. So mm -hmm. then I moved to Coeur d'Alene and I had a bunch of digitals at that point and I shot with a few more really creative photographers and it was just so much fun. So I got into it because I genuinely love it and I feel like it just kind of followed me. So then I moved to San Diego and I was actually doing marketing and then sales and mm -hmm. I made a bunch of money in sales and moved to Encinitas and during that time I only shot once um, or once or twice it was like very it was still alive but it was like not fully blossomed mm -hmm. yet and then moved to Encinitas there was just so many creative people that wanted to shoot up there so it just snowballed from there and I got signed and then it quickly just became a huge part of my life and career that's amazing so is it still something that you say you're doing more than anything else that you're doing at this time or is it has now kind of become a side thing again yeah so well this summer I went to Montana and Utah and I actually <laughs> had some shoots up there but I have transitioned to very much UGC so I'm still modeling I'm just talking on camera and mm -hmm. promoting brands for people but we just moved back and I'm really excited to keep shooting I'm, I mean it's a, a point now where I have a portfolio and I'm just gonna keep going because like you said, it's very good money. Mm -hmm. Once you make money doing it, it can be a really good way to mm -hmm. do something full time. For sure. I'm so obsessed with your work. I'll definitely put up a visual for the listeners and watchers to see just a few of your pictures, but you're just this ethereal, beautiful, captivating model and you are yeah. so good. I've even gone on a shoot with you one time with Abby Jo to the beach mm -hmm. and you're just such a natural. So I'm really excited for the tips that you're going to be sharing with us today. Our topic today is becoming a model in 2024. So would you say there's still room in this field? Is there still space for girls to enter the modeling 
field if they want to. Yeah, so I feel like there's never been more space for it mm -hmm. because, um, and I also, I don't like when people say they want more real people because models are real people too. Like mm -hmm. a size zero and two is still a real person. So when they say we want real people, I mean, I just feel like everyone's a real person. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. But, but there's, I mean, for castings, I've seen different sides of agencies where they're casting a very specific look and I can provide resources with how you can apply and adjust your demographics to mm -hmm. fit roles and roles tailored to you. It's really accessible these days. All you have to do is want to do it. I think mm -hmm. that's really important to note. Who would you say, I'm, I mean, we just kind of touched on this, that there's really room for everyone, but what kind of qualities would make up an ideal candidate? So you really yeah. want to do it and then what other ones? I feel like you have to just be yourself and just come with a competitive edge. For me, I feel like I'm size 5'4", I'm like a size 4, and I never really thought that that was meeting the requirements, but I cut my hair, I cut my bangs, I just had a lot of fun with it, and I felt like I really stepped into my younger self, mm -hmm. which I feel like is like my mm -hmm. higher self. And that's when I started really getting gigs. And that's mm -hmm. when it was just, it just was really fun because I had a very unique look and I think everyone's unique. So anyone could go in and just do it as long as you have the confidence mm -hmm. and also remember that modeling is a skill and you need to portray emotion correctly. So there's some things that you could work on developing and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that in a little bit for sure. We also already touched on this, but can people make a good living from modeling? Yeah, so when I first started modeling, it was a really hard struggle because I just never saw myself as a model. I remember my family would be like, oh my gosh, you're so photogenic and like you should model and all that. And I just never believed that. Like I was just like, whatever. I had so many flaws in my head and it was just really hard. But I think that the first foundation is you really need to get a good portfolio. And once you have that, you still need to have other things to rely on because it comes off as needy. Mm. If you are just throwing yourself at something fully and not being like super realistic because it takes time to develop networking and connections. Right. And I would say that with any industry or any job, any interview you go to, if you come off as desperate or needy, you probably yeah. really won't get that job. So that same concept could probably be applied to modeling. Yeah, right? absolutely. And I've been there. Yeah. I've been through it all. Like, <laughs> maybe not all of it, but like I've been through a lot of that push and pull of identity. So when I started, I actually was doing marketing as a side gig. That's what I got my mm. degree in. And then I was also teaching art to kids. And mm -hmm. I think what's really nice is if you can find something that you're making, like, for example, I made $85 an hour teaching kids. If you can find something that pays high for a small amount of time, so your schedule is pretty available, mm. I feel like that's really important too. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you time where you can work on building this modeling career but not necessarily be in a position where you're financially strapped yeah because that's not fun no like, trust me it's not and yeah <laughs> i flew by the seat of my pants a few times and like somehow made it work where someone's like oh there's a music video like we're paying a thousand dollars or you know mm, whatever but yeah. it's not fun to live like that yeah okay. <laughs> so so the point that i'm taking from this is this is definitely something you can start off working on but have something that you can consistently fall back on because it's not a consistent yeah. paycheck well yeah and it becomes that mm -hmm. and what I would say is you should really try to find something that complements your modeling like for mm. me I found UGC because mm -hmm. I'm learning how I look on camera all the time mm. and I'm always getting ready and I'm always modeling for a product and they're pushing it to more people mm -hmm. so then you're getting exposure and then also like having a jewelry brand that took mm -hmm. me some time to develop. Mm -hmm. I had to take a break and I did that because I was sick actually. So mm -hmm. I had to take a break and during that downtime, I was like, hey, what can I do that I love and that can complement my modeling? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good point if you're doing multiple things because, you know, for many of us, it's really hard to like box ourselves into just one niche or one yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, totally. And for that to be your whole thing, but that's a really good life hack right there that if you want to do multiple things at least make sure that they all feed into each other and yeah. kind of have something to do with each other 
Yeah, and I mean, I did teach art to kids, but for me, that was so therapeutic, and I love art, so it's like I still found passion in that, and that was while I was developing myself still, and just figuring out what I like, and you know, I was 23, I think, at that time, so mm. now I'm 25, but... Right. Okay. Yeah. You're just in the thick of it right now. You know <laughs> what I mean? 25 is just such a good age to like try so many different things. And I mean, any point in your life is a really good time to just do whatever it is that you want to do and bounce from thing to thing. There's like really nothing wrong with that. I think I... I'm trying to be less limited in that because I kind of grew up with this understanding that you pick a thing and you stick with it mm -hmm. and people who are out here trying multiple different things and like failing at some of them those are the people that aren't making it you know and I don't know if yeah. it was my community or what mm -hmm. I grew up with but it was just like no we pick one thing and we stick to it and I can't really say that I've seen those people super duper happy yeah no I totally agree and I've seen that so much and I've actually seen it more since I've moved here which mm -hmm. is super funny it's like a demographic of people i mean i'm a gen z i, I think i'm gen z i'm on the yeah very you are borderline yeah. but it's becoming a lot more common to have so many different kinds of it's like what can you offer the world you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i feel like the older you get the more you realize what's not meant for you and yep. i've tried corporate i've tried it like i've been fired i've like mm -hmm. knocked on doors and you know it's crazy in all those industries i felt like i was always sexualized and mm. it was really hard for me to be taken seriously which was really frustrating mm. and it's like I mean, might as well get just paid for it, right? Get paid for <laughs> modeling and helping people. Mm -hmm. Not only that, just like helping people the way I know that I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I don't think that it's this vapid field that people think it is. You're definitely still doing a service of some kind when you're like sharing your beauty and just yeah. sharing your body. I mean, I don't know if that sounded, <laughs> if that sounded okay, but no, I mean, just like, I mean, it is. Just, your body's beautiful. Yes. Share it yeah. with the world. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? It's meant to. Yeah, I don't think there's, there's anything wrong with that. And especially, like you just said, taking into account that even in all these other more appropriate careers. Yeah. And again, I'm not, not to say that modeling is not appropriate. I just think people have a lot of misconceptions about modeling. But it's like, easy to judge, yeah. too. How would you say that the requirements have moved towards a more inclusive kind of vibe mm -hmm. since, like, let's say, the 90s and early 2000s when everything was like... I mean, the face cards were all definite, definitely yeah. very variable, but the body type was all, like, one the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I remember when I got signed to an agency, people were like, so what are your weight requirements? And I'm like, I don't have them. You mm. know, like, I don't have that. And Like requirements as in, like, your weight that you're okay with being? Like or... what they require me to be okay. versus my height oh, okay. and, like, my measurements and everything. And I will say when I got signed, they took digitals of me and they measured me to just make sure that it was accurate, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, it's so intimidating, but at the same time, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And it's just opened up to so many different kinds of people because if you think about the marketplace, there is a product for everyone in this world. That's why we're in business, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's always a target demographic there will always be a model mm. for that demographic okay or actor like true if you want to do commercial yeah you know what i mean so because i mean i'm sure they figured out that like things sell better when more people can relate to seeing themselves mm -hmm. as a consumer of that thing or seeing themselves wearing that clothes not being like oh well that model doesn't look anything like me so it's probably not for me yeah and i'm sure that had a huge impact on sales for mm -hmm. a lot of people and I've worked in boutiques mm -hmm. and stuff too and it's like there's all sorts of different sizes and things and people who prefer different sizes love that so how does a girl start what's the jump off point yeah so I think the first thing is just making an agreement with yourself that you want to do this and that you're going to commit some time and um, have fun with it I think mm -hmm. that's like the first thing and second which is really hard is owning it as your identity hosting photo shoots regularly and you don't even need a photo shoot like you can literally set up your phone that's what I did mm. and people will start noticing they're like oh that looks very model-esque looks like they they can model a product really well so I would say just start developing your portfolio and you can reach out to photographers that mm -hmm. you like I have whole list of them I'm building out a course people can access 
that's gonna be super helpful I also want to ask you so like let's say someone is, really wants to start right and they have this dream that they really want to get into modeling but let's say they're paralyzed by the fear of what are other people going to think because I think that holds back so many mm -hmm. amazing potential people who could share their art their like any sort of work that they could put out there but this fear of what are people gonna think I mean I know personally some gorgeous stunning girls that yeah. dm me and they're like i wish i could post like you and like trust me i don't post any sort of like connoisseur or anything no. i just use my instagram as a digital diary for real mm -hmm. i build my grid based on what i think i like and i just go from there but i'll get a question and a girl will be like i want to post like you but i'm just so scared and it's like okay well nobody else is missing out on you not posting you're the only person who's missing out on not sharing yeah. the things that you want to share in fact some people are probably happy that you're gorgeous and you're not sharing yourself with you know yeah. in a way that you want so what would you say is a good thing to keep in mind if you're really worried about what people might think but you want to get into modeling just feel safe with yourself and remind yourself that you can reach your fullest potential and you really deserve that. Mm -hmm. And lock yourself in a room and start posing. Just pose the way you think looks good and whatever that is, expand on it. And mm -hmm. just practice. And if it's not meant for you, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's also okay if you It's don't. totally okay, but like trying is yeah. the best thing you can Definitely do. Definitely just try. And if you're not ready, I would say do it anyways, but mm -hmm. just get a bank of photos ready. To, like if you're ready to go off on a tangent, just start collecting photos and then start releasing them. And if you get scared, maybe you just like schedule them or like, mm -hmm. you know, just like turn off your notifications and throw, like that's what I have to Post do. and ghost. I literally do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to see anything. I'm mm -hmm. just going to post it and just yeah. go away because I don't want to convince myself that mm. like, because I know like deep down we all know we're going to get bullied. Right. Like online. So you just have to ignore it. You ignore it or just accept that as, an, as a reality. But at the yeah. same time, just know that those people who are probably talking about you and like sending your posts to each other, that's all they have. They're not out here posting. So... And I don't know. people love bullying. I feel like you have to come from a perspective of like, I don't know who's behind the camera, but I feel empathy for them mm -hmm. and I feel forgiveness for them because they don't know what they're doing and mm -hmm. they don't know that it's harmful. They just are hurt and they want to hurt other people. Yeah. Projection 101. Yeah. You've said when we had our little consultation that modeling is an art form. Yeah. Can you explain this a little bit more and kind of give tips on how to develop this as an art form? Yeah, for sure. So if you're thinking about a camera going into a shoot, I like to envision what the shoot would look like. I want to like meet the photographer, see what their vision is. And then when you're shooting, just think about what the camera is seeing. Mm. And if you can really get mm -hmm. different angles, you can make triangles with your body. You want to create space in the camera. So not be like this. Yeah, you want to like spread out and look long. It, it is really an art and I think this is important for photographers to know too is like when you're shooting a model you should always show them the composition so they can fill up that space as necessary too. Mm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it takes a lot of practice and effort to feel like you know what the camera is seeing. Mm -hmm. Even, it's really hard. I yeah. still am like yeah, yeah, I have yeah. no idea what I look like. I look yeah. like so bad but then I look and I'm like okay wait. no yeah but but then like when they show you they're like here's how it's looking then you're like oh I can go from there yeah. right so do you want to tell us about what are the different areas of modeling that people can yeah. do yeah there's I mean if you think about you know every business there is a niche for everything mm -hmm. so there's commercial modeling which I think is very similar to print modeling it's mm -hmm. basically a brand marketing a campaign like mm -hmm. for example I just modeled for white space we just did a winter collection it's just for their advertising purposes and mm -hmm. goes on web or mm -hmm. you know it's it's basically for a product mm -hmm. and then there's runway and that ties in with fashion photography too because it's mm -hmm. these designers that are 
creating this beautiful exaggerated pieces of art basically mm-hmm. that you're like running on the runway and then that can also turn into editorial which is editorial is like very creative shoots which I find very high fashion those are mm-hmm. my favorite kinds of shoots mm-hmm. I feel like I find myself doing a lot of those just mm-hmm. for fun hot take I feel like Kylie Jenner is a better model than Kendall Jenner they're both she's I mean, been killing well yeah I don't want to I love I don't want to hate on anybody but just like because probably because Kendall Kylie's not like oh here I am I'm a model but she does all these shoots and then she did close that Caperni show she's amazing model. she's yeah she's the I feel like she missed out on that career but um, I'm sure they're both happy so it so an editorial model is typically what you see in fashion magazines okay it's a it's a goal the goal is to tell a story with several images and mm-hmm. usually that relates to fashion mm. so it's more of like storytelling okay which i love and then there's maternity modeling okay. which is really popular and mm. it's very interesting because you can be not showing you can be showing you can mm. be postpartum and then mm-hmm. when you're postpartum if you so wish you can just model and like who cares that's amazing and also pretty much because who makes up the majority of the market moms right that's who's spending money that's who's seeing the commercials and that's what so many of the advertisements speak to so why wouldn't you represent them right yeah no exactly and Mm -hmm. then there's plus size which is like your typical modeling they can Mm -hmm. do anything that they want and it's just extra large and Mm -hmm. and then there is Fitness modeling, which speaks to itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gymshark models, Mm -hmm. things like that. Aloe, Lulu, that type of stuff. Does that also fit under the commercial slash print? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's just so many different things. I like to model jewelry. That's like one of my favorite things that Mm -hmm. I found. I've done Mm -hmm. fitness. I've done, you know, I've done a lot of different Mm -hmm. kinds of modeling. And I like editorial and I love jewelry. Mm. (laughs) Perfect. It sounds like you can also fuse all of those together. Mm -hmm. So because there's a potential for burnout in any industry that people work in, would you be able to tell us what this looks like in modeling and how to navigate it? Yeah, so I can share my experience. I know it's going to be completely different than everyone else's but the first time I got burnt out I was really trying to push modeling as like the full-time thing Mm -hmm. and I wasn't truly like taking care of myself and my needs I was in a really dark apartment and it was really fun at first and then it turned really like bad and dark apartment as in like dark environment was or oh in every (laughs) way way. okay okay so So just not the best living situation yeah Yeah. and it was sad because I lived in Encinitas and it was like the most beautiful place so I actually got my hair done in Beverly Hills and it was like beautiful like celebrity hair Mm. thing then as summer went on my hair started looking like super dead Mm. and I was like what the heck and my photos weren't turning out how I wanted them Mm. to and I also was exposed to mold and it was just making me really tired I just had some you know Mm. I just wasn't in a good Mm -hmm. spot so I actually took a break and I got a full-time job for a while and I got back just to being normal I moved and then I decided to model again Mm -hmm. and that's when it was like really really busy and Mm -hmm. awesome and I think that's also really important to note is like there's seasons for modeling and you can really reach out to as many people as you want and like it is up to you to like build your schedule but you Mm -hmm. have to realize that there are seasons for it summer Mm -hmm. is so slow for me Mm -hmm. and then this time is where it's really really popping quarter four yeah Christmas Mm -hmm. holidays people are shooting for everything right now Mm -hmm. and this is where it'd be a really good time to just get into it I'd say I mean if you want to model any time is a good time to start mm-hmm. but yeah burnout yeah. um but the second time I got burnt out uh was last year um I got sick mm-hmm. <laughs> from uh, mold exposure and other things like really sick I'm still dealing with it mm-hmm. which is crazy really it's had that long lasting of an effect yeah was this from the creamer story yeah just a little background Drea yeah. drank some expired creamer at work, right? Mm-hmm. And 
Yeah, just I, had the worst reaction yeah, possible, you know, to humans. Yeah, it was not good. I like fell asleep for 20 hours and oh then like woke up and was like, comp- like my lips were swollen, my eyelids were no. swollen. I thought I was dying, like it was so scary. And I thought I had sepsis because I felt like it was just so mm-hmm. weird. And then it was just an ongoing infection for like, it's still kind of there. But yeah, so this summer I just went to Montana and Park City and I healed and I worked out a lot and mm-hmm. I feel so much better mm-hmm. and it's also really nice to model for a while and take a break mm. and come back and look at it from like third eye view you know like a bird eye perspective like what do I really want out of this and how do I want to be portrayed and who do I want to shoot with and I feel like that's a great time like you need to step mm. back sometimes like yeah get a wider perspective yeah. and regain maybe appreciation for it right Mm -hmm. let's talk about some things that might be uncomfy to talk about so would there be any uncomfortable but necessary to know truths about the modeling career such as you know losing friends things like signing with an agency what's important to know about like we talked about the exclusive versus Mm non-exclusive so can you go into those things Here's a disclaimer for new models. When you start posting, you're going to lose followers. Like in any field, if you're going to switch over, you're going to start losing. Like Mm. I lost like 50 to 100 followers and probably even more. And then the real people noticed and started following me. Mm. And then like you build this different connection and that's that's just part of it but Mm -hmm. you can't let that scare you and then like with friends the thing about modeling is people can conceive it as very egocentric and just me 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 but like for me it's like very much if I'm expressing myself and I'm expressing myself for other people Mm -hmm. and for other brands and for a creative vision and I just find it to be so separate I would say that it's not egocentric and as long as you're not harming yourself or harming anybody else literally do whatever it is that you want to do and what you want to pursue people's own opinions of what you're doing is what hurts them not necessarily what you're doing even if you do i'm not saying to go out and do this immediately but even if someone offends you super badly it's still your choice and how you perceive that so if people are seeing like you modeling as egocentric and how can Mm -hmm. she that's pretty much entirely on them yeah it absolutely is and i feel like you really learn who your true friends are Mm -hmm. when you do things like that and i actually had a professor he shot my digitals for the first time Mm -hmm. he warned me about this he was like you're probably going to lose a lot of friends because not everyone understands and that's okay you know you just have to accept that and like go into it Mm -hmm. and do whatever makes you happy Mm -hmm. and the people who really matter are gonna be with you in your Mm -hmm. life either way totally and then when it comes to the agency tell Mm -hmm. the listeners what you shared with me what I didn't know about signing and making sure you know what you're getting into yeah so it depends on what you want but if you need to make sure that they're guaranteeing you work if they are exclusive Mm. because you will totally screw yourself if you sign with someone and they give you no work and you're not allowed to work with anyone else because you're signed into a stupid contract so can you expand more and let our listeners know what an exclusive agency means yeah so exclusive is like you'll get in trouble if you go Mm. and shoot and then non-exclusive is you can shoot with them and okay you can shoot with your own network of people so that's the one that you're kind of wanting Mm -hmm. to go for if you want to not put all of your eggs all in the basket of they find you work and then yeah. they, they get you like one job out of the entire year yeah and like yeah. I honestly the first agency I signed with it was like that I was mm. like so excited mm-hmm. that I just got signed and then I was like oh well there's not like I'm not getting gigs that I like I thought I would mm. and mm-hmm. it felt like that at first but mm-hmm. then because they were sending me stuff but mm. then they were like oh you're released from this they're like move, you know okay and then I was like hmm this is weird but what's really good is I um, signed with a non-exclusive agency who is actually a mother agency which they have a lot of like secrets I don't know it's really hard mm. to like get information out of them because mm. I'm like hey can I sign with this person because mm-hmm. they're meant they're supposed to assign me place me at other agencies mm. but they make it really confusing because I talked to them about that okay. and they were like oh well I might get in the way of like the work that we have I'm like you don't have that much work for me so mm. no, it's not gonna get in the way but anyways <laughs> but 
like you said, you are free to get your UGC stuff yeah, exactly. and all this. Stuff. So yeah, your hands aren't tied. So that's, I think that's also ties really well back to the point of don't rely on it as your 100% mm-hmm. full-time income. Yeah. yeah. What's really nice though is that with my agency, it's 1099 and I can write off anything of mine. So I don't have to go and start my own business. I can write off all of my gas, all of my travels. Like I wrote off a Switzerland trip like for modeling that's a life hack you guys pay attention to what she's (laughs) saying (laughs) yeah so like I have a really good tax person she has a form that Mm -hmm. I like I also am going to provide it in my course that Mm -hmm. people can write off like it makes it really easy for you to like parking tickets meals like lodge travel anything like that like Mm -hmm. I'm using my phone now so that's really important to note with the agency too if you're 1099 with them That's really good to know. Moving into, I think a very common concern that people have when it comes to modeling is safety, right? Mm -hmm. And staying safe, especially as women, especially as girls. So can you tell us what do the dangers look like and how we can kind of be vigilant and put safety first when, you know, meeting up with photographers or saying yes to certain jobs? Yeah, so I feel like you always need to have an exit plan. Photo shoots can get really creative and like you can travel and stuff. Just make sure that you like someone knows where you are Mm. and you can tell them even if it's your bedtime, you have a strict bedtime of 7 p.m. Be like, I have to be home by 7 p.m. There's no exception. Have a time that you want to go home in your head because also photographers will use you sometimes with your energy, your Mm. work. Like really milk it. Yeah, it's like, girl, like I have a shoot at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm in L.A. Like Mm -hmm. I'm going to bed Mm -hmm. like you know what I mean but there has been definitely photographers that want to do very new things which honestly I am I like doing stuff like that it's not everyone's cup of tea but like at the same time I don't like when it's forced Mm -hmm. that's really creepy and I think Mm -hmm. that's weird and I think no matter who you're shooting with they should respect your boundaries and never shoot with someone who seems weird also like maybe there's someone that's in love with you if it seems like they're really in love with you it's probably because they are like just wa- <laughs> watch out you know what i mean so just be careful mm-hmm. and have your boundaries and have your set time have mm-hmm. your exit plan know that you can say no to people mm-hmm. but at the same time there's a fine line because you want to have a good attitude i feel right. like i've seen a lot of people modeling and at the end of the shoot they are just and they don't typically model they're just so tired and they're just like i can't do this anymore i'm so over it and it's just like, like diva attitude yeah or? and that's not attractive like people mm. think that like the best talent is the most no mm. like you need to have a good attitude because the people you're shooting with are going to tell everyone else about you mm-hmm. and mm. it's going to come back to you so and you're not a celebrity it's still work <laughs> and it's still a, an opportunity to show your work ethic so that you can get called back so yeah. that they can refer you to other people who are looking for models mm-hmm. right that's a really good point yeah it's a really so, good point i mean just hold your own like mm-hmm. if you need to say no say no trust your gut more than anything just trust your gut if someone seems kind of weird like honestly i was in college and i shot with this guy who was like pretty weird and I didn't realize it mm. and I was like scared like I mm. like he didn't do anything creepy or anything but like I just felt uncomfortable we were driving to a different location kind of gave me a creepy vibe already mm-hmm. just be careful with people on, on the internet like yeah you know what I mean? especially if you're starting out because this sounds like you were pretty new with I this was still so, new. I was so in your college. discernment yeah. probably just isn't quite there yet mm-hmm. right I would even recommend, I mean, the very limited modeling that I had done, which was an amazing experience. It was actually an all-female team. It was like a very safe situation, but still, you never know. And what I did was I actually had a friend come with me out there. She didn't stay for the whole shoot, but she kind of got me there, like saw the whole setup. And I was like, okay, I feel good about this. It's okay if you want to take off. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're questioning any sort of work that you might be signing up for, see how they would react to you like just bringing a friend just be like oh like I have a medical condition I might you know like yeah this is my nurse (laughs) yeah (laughs) I might pass out and only she knows what to do so (laughs) that is so funny just I like to stretch the truth Mm. honestly I have to be home yeah someone's someone's expecting me like yeah I have a 
freaking dog. Yeah. Or like, I have a cat that I have to tend to. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> that's all you have to say. True. So, I mean, exit strategies and exit plans are like my favorite thing. I love an Irish exit, but you can't Irish yeah. exit out of a modeling shoot. Mm-hmm. But um, moving on to, so we're going to be wrapping this up pretty soon. So can you give our listeners homework so they can start yeah. building up? Yeah, so if you're interested in modeling, I would just, you know, start following some of your favorite models. People who inspire you, think about why they inspire you, and then I would start posing in the mirror. I've been told that you should try to make all the different expressions of your face that you can. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge, like, expressionalist. I'm a very serious, like, model, Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, and then like pose, find your good side, capitalize on it, work on your bad side, work on your angles. And Mm -hmm. someone told me actually, I was at a DJ meetup in New York, (laughs) and this guy uh, here reminded me of like Quincy Jones. He was like an OG guy, and Mm -hmm. he was just telling me about Kate Moss and what made her so successful. She was a photographer and she knew her angles. She's an artist. That's what I'm saying is like when an artist is modeling, or like you have to think of it like that because Mm. it really is an art and Mm -hmm. I hate when people say it's not an art because you are literally art Mm -hmm. and you are modeling art that was made and it's this whole production and it's not complete without you and it's totally an art because you have to literally you're in your body right while you're modeling but you also have to go outside of your body and imagine what does this look like Mm -hmm. right and know of course it comes with practice I'm sure knowing what your angles are and things like that but Again, you have to practice. You have to get in front of the mirror. I just want to say what I've been doing a lot of, actually. And this is a really good exercise, too, if you want to get better at not caring about what people think of you getting your pictures done or just getting used to being seen by other people because that's essentially going to be the result is when you start modeling you're going to have to be okay with a lot of people putting their eyes on you Mm -hmm. so what i'll do i will literally take my little digital camera take the tripod take the dog and we'll go onto the street and i'll set it up and people are walking and they're just like staring at like (laughs) what is this girl doing but i'm like set it on the timer get like a bunch of pictures and out of those like 30 pictures i have a good handful to post or something or I'll go down to the parking garage and I'll set up my tripod and my camera, you know, and just get some like good flash pictures down there. So smart. And again, people might think, oh, that's so weird. But like, who cares? No, who cares? Literally, who cares? And also, like, I've noticed when I do shoots with photographers, they're always really excited to shoot with someone who can think of the next move. Like, they can mm-hmm. give you a move and they have a vision, but what if you go beyond that and, like, make it something they didn't even imagine? Like, right. Like, imagine. That's so fun to work with. Bounce ideas, like, listen to them and then do your own thing and then keep on expanding. It's so fun. hmm Yeah. It's really, it really is a creative, creative process. And then can you tell the listeners how complicated is it to make a portfolio what do they need to do and we'll put a visual up for youtube too so you guys can see what we're talking about maybe i can even share your portfolio if that's okay but yeah how do people make one don't make it so complicated okay keep it simple like how many pages does it need to be for you to submit your digitals to agencies you need like four photos and i have a course to show everyone how that works an example yeah yeah but my portfolio looks different because it's it's just like like if you look at like top models portfolios i'm not saying i'm a top model but like if you look at them there's so much range of Mm -hmm. like oh they dressed up like this and like they're doing these crazy shots and like that's Mm -hmm. what i wanted and i wanted something that no one's seen before too Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's really important do what you really want to do not what someone else is doing like you can expand on other people's ideas but Mm -hmm. i would say my portfolio is probably like 10 pages you can do two or three photos for each line i made mine on canva Mm -hmm. it was free i literally didn't even buy a domain i just was like DreaModel.canva.com, and okay. I got signed that way. Oh, you can build a website on Canva? Yeah, it's Wait, free. Wait, I'm just now learning this. Yeah, that's free. amazing. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sponsor me. <laughs> okay, that's a great tip. We'll put that in. Yes, Canva. Sponsor her. The presentation that you made on Canva was super good. So we'll plug the the course at the end of this show, and also in the show notes too, in the drop down description. In your course, you kind of talk about how to start reaching out to photographers. In your area and just kind of pitching collaboration like hey i'm you know a beginner model i am building up my portfolio would you like to shoot together yeah what are we to do if we run into a we say this 
we kind of make it clear that you know we're trying to do an exchange yeah what if they hit us with the oh yeah it's a uh, my rate is a thousand dollars an hour <laughs> where do we go from there is that just kind of like a tough just, titties yeah. situation i mean just move on you'll, okay you'll get a good photo like, okay you'll get a good photo you'll get a few good photos yeah I'm but sure. that's just them telling you like no i only do this like for work and yeah. you're not quite there yet maybe yeah or... and it's kind of funny because i've like <laughs> i've like worked with people who've like charged a lot and I'm like honestly sorry but like it's not that like you're not that good sorry <laughs> that's that's what's interesting about the photographer field because I've started looking into some you know especially with getting some maternity pictures done especially yeah. the more like unique way and not necessarily mm -hmm. like oh we're in a field yeah. holding our ultrasound pictures yeah. sorry not to like <laughs> not to rag on anyone who does that but I just have a different vision okay I'll tell you after we're done recording but but yeah some people I'll just like I'll look at their stuff and they give you a quote and it's just so crazy to try to wrap your mind like there's really no industry standard in how much photographers charge you can't just be like okay I'm gonna get a picture a photo shoot done and it'll probably be like it used to be when I was getting my my senior pictures done it was oh like what God. like in the low hundreds yeah maybe a hundred fifty dollars i paid for my senior photos but now people will just say yeah it's a thousand for an hour yeah girl what i feel like the best thing to do in that situation is just keep developing your portfolio mm -hmm. i would just be like hey i have this creative idea do you want to collab mm. that's a great word to use make sure that they know that that's it's what a you're collab going. Okay. Yeah, so I would say that, and then if they're going to charge you a lot, then just move on, mm -hmm. if that's not in your budget. Yeah. Learning how to deal with rejection is good for anything <laughs> that you want to pursue. It's just going to be part of it, but you will get somewhere. You just have to ask enough people. You do, yeah. yeah. And I think it will come to you, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're putting it out there, I think eventually, like... And it, like, here's the thing I've noticed, is, like, I'll shoot with one person, and that then goes to, like, everyone mm -hmm. in their feed. Mm -hmm. They're getting followed by photographers and brands. Ooh. So then every time I collab with someone, it gets exposed to all these different people. And it's like... It gives you a little more growth each time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I just went on a photographer retreat in Zion and I shot with five different, six different photographers mm. and got followers from each person. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. And um, that's from all over like the mm -hmm. United States, which is really fun. Mm. And that's another thing too, is if you really want to make it big time, you have to travel because if you're trying to compete in LA, that's the market saturated, not saying that you can't model mm -hmm. in LA because there is so much work. But at the same time, if you want to stand out really, like you should be going international and just make sure that you're being safe with that and know who you're going mm -hmm. with. But like, that's how you really make it push it even further. Yeah. I think what you said earlier about having range is what's really going to get you noticed and people seeing like yeah. a wide variety of your work and not just just beach pictures, right? Yeah, and it's, I like to think of like, I want to be that person that no one's ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Like I want to do concepts that no one's ever seen before and like, you know, it's just... There's something special about that, mm -hmm. and I think that stands out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So to kind of wrap up today's episode, I can't believe this is already the end of it because time really flies when we talk. But um, yeah, it does. Um, so what we learned today about pursuing a professional modeling career with friend model artist Drea is there is still room in the field for you if you want to do this and the main thing is number one is mindset as with all things that you want to try and get into is just really wanting it and trusting yourself to pursue this and put in the work that you need to put in there's a lot of room in the field today still for you to get into it, the requirements are just so much more wide and diverse and inclusive than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. And all you really need to do is... All you need to do is want to do it. And just start putting in the action. Because for some of us, we can get stuck in like mm -hmm. the planning phase of things. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, so get in front of that camera, start taking pictures. Because yes, it might not be your ideal at first, but the more that you do it, the more safe you'll feel with mm -hmm. yourself. Practice really does make perfect. Well, we'll never get to a perfect standard ever in our lifetimes, yeah. right? But the more that you do something, the more confidence you grow in it, and the more you can just feel like, wow, I really enjoy this. I can do this. This is possible for me. And basically just be your own biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys want to learn more and have more of a hands-on 
training slash course with Drea? Is there something that you offer? So I'll be starting a course and it's going to include agencies, just a more in-depth knowledge of the field and what you need to know connections to photographers you know how to find your type of modeling that you want to do i'm also going to offer consultations like i did with alina because i feel like if someone really wants to know and sit down and like talk i'm always here i also am always looking for models for my brand that would be a great way to start show them your necklace oh yeah here's my necklace this is Dandy 47, my friend started it this year, and it's been so fun, and I'm always looking for models, so if you are interested, just DM me, and yeah, it would be a good way to get your feet wet and a fun career. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, like, I was just so impressed by what Drea put together for this modeling informational kind of like PowerPoint Mm -hmm. like she had all sorts of tips on there like really tangible things that you can do like a list of photographers that you can work with a list of agencies and just so many things you even had apps on there that are for models Mm -hmm. and that will tell you where you can go to do like little collabs or like go and eat for free and then you post their food so that was that just blew me out of the water and I just know that people are going to really, really find that useful and amazing. And you did such an incredible job on this project. So I really hope that if you're interested in modeling, that you go to Drea's. Are you going to be promoting it on Instagram or on your website? Yeah, I'll promote it on Instagram. I'll have a link in my bio. So, and then in the show notes and then... Absolutely. um, I can offer a discount here too. Okay. Um, Can do like 30% off. For new listeners. That's that's really great and amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So Thank you for joining this episode of the Alina Edit. If you're watching on YouTube and if this episode helped you in any way and if you enjoyed it, a like would be super duper helpful to the show. And if you want to see more content like this, just hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on my socials linked down below and find all of my favorite things on my LTK. And here's your reminder that you absolutely will achieve your dream life and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.